Let's talk about Jamal Williams at Dallas, RB20. That's 11 spots higher than the experts. I don't know. The, the DeAndre Swift thing makes this always a little bit confusing. Not sure, but Williams has proven that with or without Smith, he or without Swift, he can put up points. Yeah, he really has. I mean, leads the NFL even with the bye week in red zone carries, goal line attempts. The guy's a touchdown scorer in an offense that has more often than not put up touchdowns. So yeah, big, big fan of Jamal Williams. Um think he, you know, looking at his numbers, so the fact that he's running back 31 just kind of blows my mind. It's just Given that he's been the running back 11, 35, 2, 5, 39. I mean, three of his five weeks have been top mm-hmm. 11, literally two of them top five. And even the bad weeks, he's been okay too. So, yeah, I really like Jamal Williams. I think he is significantly underrated by the experts right now. All right, Brian Robinson, a guy you're just dying to get behind, going against the Packers. You got him at RB21. The experts like him at 26. Why are you giving Ro- Brian Robinson that little bump? Yeah, I mean, the guy saw 15 or 17, rather, of 25 carries, walked right in to be a pseudo featured back role. Now, he doesn't catch the ball. We know that's going to be Jerry McKissick. But still, I, I mean, Robinson, yeah, he didn't look overly sexy in his action here no but 17 carries or 17 carries well over half the snaps and they did say after the game we want to get antonio gibson more involved he did look like he had a little more juice but yeah. i think the goal line role will definitely be robinson's this absolute bull so yeah i'm a big fan of robinson i think he could uh continue to see about 15 to 20 carries and all the goal line work a, a good bet for like 10 to 15 points and that makes him a viable running back to flex play you got Kareem Hunt at Baltimore, RB22, six spots higher than the experts. Hunt coming off about the worst game you could possibly have as a running back. So this is an interesting call. Talk talk to me. Why is this your pick for higher? He's seeing more goal line and red zone usage than Nick Chubb right now. Just happens that Chubb is an elite talent and just converts it at a far higher right than, rate than Kareem Hunt. But I'm just kind of sensing a, a game flow here of the Ravens getting up early and often against a really bad, really underwhelming Browns defense right now. So I wouldn't be shocked at all to see Kareem Hunt just take over uh, in like a, a negative game script, kind of get peppered. He typically, too, has had great performances against the Ravens since joining the Browns. So I'm banking on, you know, a six to seven catch, finding the end zone day. Everything's been good except the conversion on the goal line right now. This could be the week it all kind of comes to fruition. We get a touchdown. We get five to six catches. We get a nice day out of Kareem Hunt. I think he's very usable in your running back two slot. Lower, David Montgomery at the Patriots, RB25. The experts like him up at 19. I never know what to think about Montgomery. Why don't you like him? Is it the Patriots defense? Is that it? Big part of it. But the other part of it is, despite seeing 56 of the uh, 72 snaps compared to 16 for Khalil Herbert, entering this week, uh, Matt uh, Eberfrilis, whatever the fuck his name is, had made it very, very clear that this has now become a hot hand approach. Given that Khalil Herbert outgained, (laughs) you know, uh, David Montgomery, 75 yards on just seven carries last week. Uh, outgained him on only, again, 16 snaps compared to 56. He would be far more productive player. In fact, Khalil Herbert has 63 attempts on the year. Montgomery has 62, given that he was out for a bit. Herbert has more yards after contact, 272, than Montgomery has rushing yards, 246. Okay, after contact. Herbert's just a beast. So if this is actually a genuinely true hot hand approach, Khalil Herbert is going to smash and run away with his job. So at 60% rostered, one, go smash, pick up Khalil Herbert if he's out there in your leagues. But two, be a little bit more wary. I was kind of on the buy Montgomery train given his usage since he's returned. But if this becomes a hot hand situation, it could get ugly early and often. Plus the Pats taking out what you do best. I don't think either back has a good game. But if one does, it's probably going to be Herbert if they do ride the hot hand. Travis Etienne, I do agree with this take. Going against the Giants, you got him as your RB, 28, five spots lower than the experts do. Hard for me to get behind Etienne in this game. Hard for me to get behind him ever. And I know yeah, that I mean, right, right. the roles are starting to switch. We've seen back-to-back his most productive days of the year with 13 and 12 half PPR points. I get this. But in general, as, as you can see, a lot of my lowers come from this game. I think it's an ugly kind of just sloppy, slappy fest that I want nothing to really do with. I think if anything, it's kind of a James Robinson, like let's ugly grind this thing out, try to win. 10 carries, 10 carries, three catches, two catches. I mean, the usage has gone up for Etienne and he's he's looking well, but I guess the most damning thing is we still got zero touchdowns on the year. 
I don't know. Even with everything trending right, I think people are aggressively ranking Etienne at running that 22 right now as like a lock. Put him in your lineup. Don't think it, don't even think about it. I think we have to have some pause in a guy that hasn't scored, has been pretty game script dependent, even with everything trending the right way. I I guess I don't want to be that, you know, the classic week too late rather than being the week early, but I think we're a little week early here. I don't think the Giants are good enough to force a Travis Etienne game script. I never pronounced this guy's last name right, but Tyler Algier, how do you pronounce that? I think that's right, actually. I think you nailed oh, it, Algier. well, hello. Uh, <laughs> at the Bengals, RB 37, seven spots below the experts. Why are you down on this poor guy? It's just a matter of the emptiest calories at running back. <laughs> <laughs> no one, two receptions on the year. Ah, okay, good. Two receptions. I was going to say one. He's got two. It's, it looks like okay on paper. 15, 13 carries. Like, oh, you, you got a running back getting that much work. He's got to be in, right? Gets pulled at the goal line for Caleb Huntley. Gets pulled on third downs for, you know, I even forget, Avery something. Williams, yep. I don't even remember. It's, it's just a shitstorm. It's a three-headed nightmare of a pretty bad offense. Plus, you got Mariota as a potential vulture, too. Algier just doesn't do it. Five, five, four, and three. One 11-point day was his best game. And this isn't a great matchup against Cincy. I think they get game flowed out of the run early. Not a fan of Algier. Most of it, it's, it, I'm not sitting here like saying it's the boldest thing to bench Algier, but the fact that he's ranked as a top 35 <laughs> running back gives you like flex ranking. No, just don't even think about him. Don't put him in. Hail Mary, Sony Michelle going against Seattle, only 5% rostered. You also like Samaji P. Ryan at Atlanta, 6% rostered. Both guys you could probably pick up if you wanted them. Yeah, you certainly couldn't. I think both these guys fit a similar narrative in that standalone. They could plod their asses into the end zone. We saw Sony actually see more rush attempts yeah. than Austin Eckler last week, which is fucking crazy. Good thing that Eckler saw 16 targets. My God, what an absolute monster he is at that stage. Think, but the thing was, Josh Kelly got hurt. He was the clear cut guy above Sony Michelle. He's hurt. It might be a long term thing here, too. So, Sony Michelle probably going to get a smattering of carries, potentially even at the goal line. Then you add in the fact of if something happens to Eckler, would be devastating. I have Eckler in almost all of my leagues right now. Love the guy to all death. Hope nothing ever happens to him. But if something does, Sony Michelle would be a, a high-end running back too in this offense yeah. for however long he, he's out. We saw Justin Jackson put up over 30 fantasy points in his lone start last year. So I could see Sony Michelle. You got that kind of handcuff with benefits, similar to Samaj P. Ryan, still playing more third down, seeing more targets than Joe Mixon for whatever godforsaken reason. Still makes zero sense to me but ultimately he's got a role could find the end zone as he has a couple times this year so you get that kind of maybe he's usable if you're absolutely desperate but again if something happens to Mixon, we're talking about the highest paid free agent running back of next week of the you know one of those guys that could be a smash running back to any week that he's out so both these guys kind of fit that handcuff with benefits bill if i'm desperate for a streamer that's kind of where i want to look Things we're watching, burning questions. Obviously, you're interested in both sides of that Raiders-Texans uh, running back situation with Josh Jacobs and with Damian Pierce. Also, worth mentioning the DeAndre Swift thing that we talked about. Back to health, obviously, at his best. He's great. And the Ravens' backfield conundrum. Does Gus the bus return? Stash him now. He's 18% rostered. Any of those you want to elaborate on? No, I think they're all kind of self-explanatory. The only big thing is just how valuable both Josh Jacobs and Damian Pierce have been. I love Scott uh, Scott Barrett's expected fantasy points article. So just to quote him real quick, over the last four weeks, Jacobs is averaging 21.7 carries per game, second most, 5.7 targets per game, seventh most, 21.1 expected fantasy points per game, second most, and 26.5 points per game, second most as well. And these are all elite with like 79% snap share, 98% running back carry share, 60% of the routes, 81% of the expected fancy points. Like if this sticks and it doesn't seem like any good reason not to, this guy's a smash top five running back. Like this is borderline Christian McCaffrey type of usage right now. In fact, only five running backs this year. I've seen 70% of carries and 15% of targets McCaffrey twice, Jacobs twice and Fournette once. So, I mean, the usage is beyond elite. Then you got the matchup against Houston. Smash play, 6,500 on DraftKings. Chalk of the week, going to be worth the chalk. And then Pierce, too, on the other side of the ball. 79% snap share in week five, 90% of the carries, 20.8% uh, target share. That was the big thing. Now we're starting to see him get elevated as a pass catcher. 81% of the backfield points as well, expected-wise. He's looking like a locked-in running back one now and the future. Plus, we got Lubby Smith coming out saying he needs at least 20 carries per game. 
you hit the jackpot if you got Damian Pierce in your leagues, folks. Obviously, you don't need my push to start him, but there's no questions about him anymore. Love to see it. Remember how bad Josh Jacobs used to suck? Yeah, and it was never that he was bad. He always was very good. It's just the role. And entering this 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 week, it was like or this year rather, McDaniel's in his old committee, and you know he can't even beat out Abdullah for the past. It was just all like that kind of classic plot that just didn't end up coming to fruition. So yeah, uh, right. definitely Josh Jacobs rest of the season looking like an absolute monster. So what is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments. Check out some more videos. And join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below.